Welcome to LEAD. We're in this season of maturity, and our goal and our desire for you is that you mature. If you're listening or viewing uh, LEAD, I really hope and my prayer is that, that you develop. Because leadership, um, well, it, it's a process. Development's a process. Adult leadership is the goal. And I'm using that, that terminology, adult leadership, because I think that's important. And, and I, I love what uh, Henry David Thoreau said. He said, if a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it is because he hears a different drummer. I like that. That's a true statement. He goes on to say, let him step to the music which he hears, however measured or far away. It is not important that he should mature as soon as an apple tree or an oak shall he turn his spring into summer. And I think what he's saying is this, that, that all of us, well, in our growth patterns and in development cycles, it's a process. And it's not, it's not the same as, as it, for you as it is someone else or for all of us together. It's different. And yet, the end goal is that we become adults. We do adulting in our leadership, that we develop and we mature in leadership. Apostle Paul says it in 1 Corinthians 13, 11. In the Living Bible, he said, it's like this when, a, when I was a child, I spoke and I thought and reasoned as a child does. But when I became a man, well, my thoughts grew far beyond those of my childhood. And now I have put away the childish, thing, childish things. Eugene Peterson, the message says, when I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooed like an infant. When I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. And we understand there's such a, a, a beautiful metaphor the Apostle Paul uses and Henry David Thoreau uses as that of a, of a child or of a, of a little boy that is growing into an adult, into a man, or a young girl growing into to an adult uh, a lady, uh, we understand that child, uh, children, and that infants, well, they're very different than adults in a whole realm of, of, of uh, possibilities and ways. We, we could say size, and we'd be right, right? The size of an infant and the size of an adult, well, they're different. Uh, and that's a, that's a huge difference. Uh, we could say physical characteristics, and we'd be right there. I mean, there's just, you know, things about an adult that's, uh, well, our, our, our fingers are, right, are just the size, but yet also the characteristics of, of uh, facial features and, and parts of our, of, of our development, well, they, they change. And that's right as well. Um, we could say intellectual knowledge that's retained and now that an adult has compared to, to a child. And vast difference there. Now, all those would be right. But I think one of the most important differences between a child and an adult, and this applies to leadership, is development, development. Just the sheer development that happens in so many ways, like development of motor skills. Uh, my granddaughters, they're starting to do, uh, my youngest, she'll be two pretty soon, and she's starting to do these, uh, uh, where, you, where you roll over, you know, I forget what they're called, but you, but you roll over, and she just thinks it's the biggest thing. And what's happening is she's developing motor skills that she can do things and strength and as, as I said earlier about phys, our physicality and, and, and size for sure and knowledge, right? Those are our developmental processes that happen for children becoming adults. But I would say vocabulary, well, that's a big one. That, that, that the, the words that are learned and it's not just, it's not just grunts and, and as a baby would do or, or noises that don't have any definition, but they learn words. And as an adult, our vocabulary expands, right? Discernment, looking at certain situations and knowing what's good and what's bad and what's wrong and what's evil and what's, what's, um, what is whole and what's not and all those things. Reasoning kind of plays into that as well. Negotiating, the ability to negotiate things and reason in our mind. Social interactions, well, that changes from an infant to an adult. An infant doesn't, they, they, they have certain things they do and, and it's very limited to get your attention. As an adult, we have, we know how to interact socially better, better than a toddler, hopefully. Emotions, well, those, those change. You know, you hear the, 
you hear the crying of the screaming baby. Oh, right. It gets your attention, but, but emotions, well, they, they grow. And, and it goes on and on, the list of ways uh, that an infant develops into an adult. I think when it comes to maturity and leadership, well, there's a whole lot of development that needs to take place. And, you know, one of the huge marks of development, if it's in an infant, we see it in a toddler, um, that, that significant mark of development um, is, is this. And I think it's whether it's a child developing into an adult or it's someone maturing as a leader, it's when we become and we, we grasp the concept of becoming a self-feeder. That's the, that's the word I want to use, self-feeder. I believe that's adult leadership. The goal is adult leadership. One of the significant marks of adult leadership, of maturing in my leadership, is becoming a self-feeder. That, that, uh, and, and we know the picture of the infant, or the, I'm sorry, not the infant, but the toddler, the, 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 the developing um, baby that's growing into a child, that they sit in a high chair. It, well, it's a huge market development when that child that's nursed or had the bottle, now they're able to eat food that, that not just milk, but now they can eat food. And then the trick is to get them in the high chair and get them to eat what's good for them. Because what good, what's good for them, they, they, they may not like. And so people develop all kinds of tricks. They get the spoon, do the airplane thing, and buzz it all around, and, and take it in, or, or whatever the other things are, where you open the doors, and, and trying to help them to, to eat, but you're spoon feeding them, spoon feeding them. The, the mark, the significant mark in the maturity of a child growing is when that child becomes a self-feeder, when they can sit in their high chair or at the table and they can take a spoon or fork and they can feed themselves. Yay! That's a good day. Because every kid has got to become a self-feeder so they can become an adult. There's no places where you go to the restaurant, I don't, I don't guess, as far as I know, I've never been there, where you go to the restaurant and the serving staff come alongside and they get the spoon and fork and they feed you. Right? Only way that would happen is if you were unable physically to do it because an adult sits down and they, they eat themselves. They're a self-feeder. They take responsibility. Oh, I'm hungry. Anybody ever had that moment where you've been working or you've been involved in something? All of a sudden you notice you haven't eaten and you're like starving. And what do you do? You don't wait for somebody to bring something and, and put it in your mouth. You go and feed yourselves. And I think um, when it comes to growth as a leader, growth as a disciple, as a Jesus follower, We've got to arrive at the place where we are self-feeders. I think about in the church context, well, Sunday morning's great. I love Sundays. They're great opportunities to sit and hear a well-prepared, well-crafted message. And it's wonderful and it's enjoyable when, you, when it's right and, and you connect and the speaker connects with you and you, you receive something. Uh, but that's not the goal. That's not maturity. Because anyone could do that. Anyone could sit in a room and let someone give them what they prepared. The goal is that every one of us, like it is with a child, that every child becomes a self-feeder, that every person in their life and leadership becomes a self-feeder. That's a significant mark of maturity when you get to the place that you say, I'm going to take responsibility for my maturity, for my growth. And if you show me someone that struggles with self-feeding, I'll show you someone that's immature. That's just the way it is. It's been said that leaders are readers. I wholeheartedly believe that. I'll add this, right? Leaders are readers, but readers are leaders. You devour and you learn to read and you make it a, a habit to read, well, you're going to grow. And, and, and I'll start here. First of all, you need to read God's Word, the Bible. Greatest book ever written. There's not a close second. There's, it's the, the, the second place is nowhere near proximity to how great the Bible is. You should read the Bible. And if you're a Jesus follower, you definitely should. If you're watching this and you're just watching it for leadership, you should get the greatest book of all and read it. Read it. I say this, don't, don't wait for someone to read it to you. Read it for yourself. And, and, and I stress this a lot because I think it's so important that, that it's a mark of maturity, it's a significant one, that you get to the place where you're reading and you're reading on your own. Secondly, that you study it, that you don't just read it, you study it, that you find out what is it saying, what does this mean for me? And then here's another one, that you memorize it. 
right? Leaders need to be in God's Word. You need to read the Bible. You need to, you need to study it. You need to memorize it. And if it takes having a verse of the day or a verse of the week and you just continually speak it and say it and say it, do that. Be a self-feeder. Figure out how am I going to grow. Listen to podcasts. Listen to messages, to sermons, to, to, to people that are sharing from God's Word, people that are sharing on leadership. Uh, I remember I was 31 and somebody gave me a, uh, we called it an album then. It, it, was, uh, it was just like, I think, 16, I don't know, maybe 24 cassette tapes of John Maxwell. And I got those, and I never heard anything like it, and I just listened and listened. And then I, I just burned them up, wore them out, listening over and over, because I wanted to get the truth. I wanted to get the concepts. I wanted to get the principles, and I wanted to apply it to my life. And so that meant I had to take ownership. And I expect you know, the elevation, I expect in your life, wherever you're from or wherever you are listening or viewing this, that you'll take the responsibility as a part of maturity and leadership to be a self-feeder. When you get hungry enough, you'll make it a point to feed yourself and I say this, that is an incredible and significant mark of maturity in your life and leadership.